So we've had some absolutely crazy stuff happen in between episodes. Is I mean, I, I just can't. I've got to show you it because it's just so crazy. Hello and welcome back to The Real Deal. Today we have two games for you. Seville and Barcelona are coming up. And today's episode is, is basically a load of good news and a load of bad news as well. We'll start off with how we've played in the last few games. And there's good news in there and there's bad news in there. So since you were last here, the good news is we have been undefeated in all league games, which is pretty nice, I've got to say. The bad news is the, the cup curse against Bilbao is still there for a third season in a row. So there's that as well. Right, let's talk to these fixtures then. Uh, last episode was uh, Real San Sebastian and Sporting Gijon. We drew to San Sebastian and we beat Gijon. We then had the winter break, beat some team there, which is pretty decent. And we came back against Espanyol and managed to beat them 3-2. Although a late comeback was on the card to them as they scored in the 85th minute and looked to score a few more, actually. They were very, very good towards the end of that game. We were lucky to hold on to the to win. After that, it looks like a 4-0 win against uh, against Levante until they scored two in the 80th minute. And I was getting a little bit worried then when they started to come back into things. However, Borja Fernandes put it beyond all doubt to make it 5-2 very late on. I'd also missed out with two Seville games as well by accident. Uh, we, we played Seville there in between Espanyol and Levante. 1-0 win there. Salonki with the goal. A very heavily rotated side. And then again, we beat them 2-0 in the second leg. Again, with another heavily rotated side, which is good. Very good for Martin Gonzalez Garcia, the young goalkeeper, to get two clean sheets as well. That's fantastic stuff for him. We then had Villarreal in the league. And again, another 2-0 win. Hans Osmanovic and Ricardo Orsolini scoring two goals. Uh, late on in the game to make sure we won that one. Then came the first Spanish Cup game against Bilbao, which we lost 2-0, despite having a relatively strong lineup there. Uh, a few changes, but it was a pretty decent lineup, I've got to say. We didn't let that deter us in the league, though, as we dismantled Deportivo La Coruña 3-1, uh, scoring all our goals in the first... In fact, all the goals in the first half, but all ours in the first 36 minutes. We then had to play Bilbao again, had to go out and win 3-0 at least to make sure we, uh, we we got through into the next round. And unfortunately, despite having a pretty strong lineup, um, a pretty, almost a very, very normal strong lineup, we couldn't do it. So for whatever reason, the, the curse against Bilbao in the cup is still there. I don't know why we can't beat Bilbao in the cup, especially when we're, th look at this, we're thrashing, we've, we've not lost a league game since November and it's now February. And yet we can lose two games against Bilbao in the cup with a very, very strong lineup. The same lineup basically has been playing in all these games, which I thought was very weird. We then went up against Real Madrid and managed to win it 2-1. Uh, they didn't score from open play Madrid, actually. They got an own goal, uh, courtesy of Maximilian Verba. Hans Osmanovic with two, and actually, uh, Dominic Solanke missed a penalty as well. So he did pretty well. It was a pretty good result. That could have been a 3-0 win for us. It means that we've beaten Madrid twice this season now. So it means whatever happens, if we finish on level points with them, we will go ahead of Madrid because we have a better head-to-head -head record against them this season. And then last time out, we played Tenerife, winning 3-2. Ricardo Orsolini with 2-1 of them penalty. Luka Adzic with the other and they scored pretty late on to give us a little bit of a scare in the final few moments thinking we could drop points. But we managed to defend well in the last few minutes to make sure we won that 3 Two. So as you can see, a lot of games played. Only about six league games, but a lot of cup games as well, which is a little bit annoying. Um, they kept coming up and things like that. But we, we played at least we played six league games, which is usually the time I leave in between episodes. So today, Seville and Barcelona are going to be huge tests away from home against sixth and third in the league. We'll probably have to go five at the back in both of these games. Right on to transfers. Then there were a few of them in the uh, in in the window. And again, there's good news and there's bad news in there. Good news is we signed a right back. Bad news is we didn't get a centre midfielder, which is a little bit annoying. Good news is Lozano is on loan uh, rather than selling. He's on loan. So we've still got a next season, technically speaking, if we want to keep hold of him. We can't find someone else. Bad news is Raul Thomas is leaving at the end of the season. He didn't want to sign a new contract and someone else swooped in for him. So he's leaving at the end of the season, which is a little bit annoying because I wanted to keep hold of him and get rid of Lozano. But it's now going to be the other way around. On the outside, Johansson did go to Kievio. Uh, for 750k, rise to 1.1 million. And Lozano's gone to Angers for a loan fee of 100k per month, which is pretty good going. He's going to be hopefully scoring goals there and will come back reinvigorated. On the inside, we have spent 6.25 million on 19 year old Lamine Diouf from Villarreal. He is going to be our, our new right back, probably. Uh, three star current ability, four and a half star potential. He's very, very similar to David Cameron right now. David Cameron maybe slightly better at going, going forwards. Uh, this guy slightly better in defence, which is all right by me. Got some really, really good physicals though, uh, and where they matter, mentals and technicals are good, but we can always get them. He's only 19 years old, so he's still quite young. But we'll probably rotate him and David Cameron 
around a little bit. Uh, they're both three-star current ability, but of course, the youth has more potential, so we'll probably use him more. So that's all the transfer stuff. There is a little bit more good news and bad news, and it's in the form of Hans Osmanovic uh, down here. Good news is his, uh, his recent form has been very, very good. Two goals there, one goal there. You know, if you, if you want to scroll down, you can see loads of goals being scored. He's been in superb inspired form recently. Bad news is that he uh, he now suffers a major injury with a broken ankle. So he's going to be out for the rest of the season, unfortunately. So don't expect to see Hans Osmanovic again this season, which could be detrimental, really. It could be a bit detrimental to us. So thank you very much for your service so far, Hans. Um, he's played, what, 20, 20 games, 18 goals, 7 assists. Very, very good. Unfortunately, that's what it's going to be this season. I don't think he's going to play again. Hopefully, the injury won't affect him too much and he'll come back next season stronger and better, fitter, hopefully scoring more goals but it's a, it is a big blow to take and with all that being said we're going to go into today's game against Seville and I know I said we do fire at the back but actually we did beat them twice in the cup with a weakened side using this formation so I think we're going to go with it again you should be pretty familiar with the starting lineup now I've got to say We've, this is sort of what it is basically it doesn't, it's not going to change too much from this with Burke in goal uh, Cucurella, Verba, Romero and Diouf coming in on the right hand side of defence Ruiz, Borja Fernandes and Badeke in the middle. Adzic on the left, Orsolini on the right and Dominic Solanke is going to be starting up front for us today due to the injury to Hans Osmanovic. So hopefully Solanke, I mean, he's been decent as well recently, Solanke. Uh, how many goals has he got? He's got 5 and 13. So not quite the same record, but it's still pretty decent. Uh, he's still up there scoring goals and now he's going to be the lone striker this season for the rest of it. I'm, I'm expecting to get into double figures at least. Before we go any further though, I, I, I forgot to do it, didn't I? League table. League table is looking fantastic. Uh, all on 23 games at the moment, but we seem to be ahead of Barcelona by four points and ahead of Real Madrid by six points. So if you beat Barcelona today, surely second place is ours. We are miles away from Malaga in fifth and Seville in sixth. We've just been so good recently. So Champions League football is, is a definite like if we if we drop out of the Champions League places at this stage of a the season, then there is something seriously wrong with me as a manager and then the team. Right, and kickoff is upon us. I feel like that took a long time to get through all of that, and I feel like I probably said it in a really weird uh, order that doesn't really make much sense, and you probably lost me already. But it had to be all said. Hopefully, we're going to have some short, snappy games against Seville and uh, and Barcelona now to to, to make up because I mean, that took a lot of time. I haven't got much time left in this episode, so let, let's let's hope these games crack on. First highlight of the game, it looks like it's coming towards us as we make the tackle on the halfway line. Romero now on the ball with Verba. Now, uh, with a lot of space and time to do something with it, Kukurela now out on the wing. Can he get a ball through to Adzic? He does. Adzic now can get a ball into Borja Fernandez, into Orsolini, whose shot just goes over the bar, but a nice little bit of opening pressure from us there. Chance for Seville now, though, as they try and come forward. Although, good interception there from Bedeka as Salonke now gets himself tackled with a little bit of excitement there. Mura has been put forward from Seville. Seville now, Muriel into their man and they've put it in the back of the net. The first real opportunity of the game and Seville managed to capitalise on it. We've got a chance now to come forward though through Solonke now as uh, as Bedeka is now put back on the ball with a deep line playmaker. Into Borja Fernandes, Adzic now on the ball, into Solonke with space. He manages to fire his back level with Seville. A wonderful goal there, a decent shot from the middle of the area past the goalkeeper at a decent angle. Well done, Salonke. You're living up to the expectations. We need him to be scoring the goals because Adzic, um, Adzic, Orsolini is not going to... Orsolini, it's not Orsolini. Because I'm looking at this thing thinking he's just going to be there. Osmanovic, that's the one I'm thinking of. He's not there to score the goals, so we need him to. Okay, well, I'm gonna, I don't think that was the best first half. I'm going to go aggressive, not have your performance out there, boys. Everyone looks fired up, which is good. That's what I want to see. But um, I don't know... I. I they probably played a very weak inside in the cup, which is probably why this formation worked against them in the cup. Perhaps we should have gone five at the back instead. But a few players just really not playing too well. So we may change formation in a little bit as well. See what happens there. As uh, Seville come forward once again, hit the post. Muriel gets the rebound. And just after the restart, they go 1-0 up, which is really, really disappointing, actually. We need better than that. We're going to say to man more. I'll tell you what. I'm not, I'm not happy with things are going. We should have gone five at the back, I think. But... That's a bit too negative now, I think, for this game. So we're going to go to this formation that we've not really used much at all. Badeka and Borja Fernandez are going to swap over, maybe. Yeah, I think we'll do that. Borja Fernandez could be the Mazala. Uh, Adzic is going to become our attacking playmaker. Solonke will stay up front. And Rauda Thomas is going to come on for Orsolini. I'm actually tempted, actually, to leave Borja Fernandez on as that 
box the box midfielder and bring Maksimovic on as the Mazala. He's very, very good at it, likes to do it. Let's see what this happens now with this formation change. Well, it turns out not much has happened with the formation change. It's been, what, a good 15, 20 minutes since we changed formation and uh, I, I, there's been no highlights, nothing's happened. At least the game heard me when I said I wanted a short, snappy game to get through the episode a bit quicker. But we've got a highlight now, Diouf on the ball, that throws it straight to the opposition who now clear it. Compos, Anios, uh, and so rather doesn't have the best pass on him, gives it straight to Diouf, and now Burke Erz has a chance to uh, get it to one of our guys. Does get it to Diouf, which is good stuff. Diouf now on the ball, the new man, with a great crossfield pitch pass, whatever I tried to say there, to Kukurella. Kukurella up to Salonka, he wins it, but doesn't quite get it onto Rauda Thomas, but adds it back on the ball. Borja Fernandez back to Kukurella. Kukurella with time to put the cross in. It's somehow got it. Oh, Salonka got on the end of it there. I thought Kukurella's cross just went in the back of the net, but Salonka must have got a slight glancing header on it to put it past the goalkeeper. We encourage the boys now in these final 10 minutes to try and get a win. We've been in this situation before. We've been drawing quite late and then snatched a victory. Hopefully it happens again today. One final change then. Uh, we're going to bring on Sunset for Borja Fernandez, I think. Uh, and he only wants to be a playmaker, really, which is a little bit... We'll leave him like that. Sunset will come on for these final few moments of the game. Hopefully he'll change something out there. Well, we're still unbeaten in the league. We're still unbeaten in the league. This is the hardest game we've had apart from the Real Madrid game, which we managed to win somehow. But that was a fight back system which just seems to work so well against like Real Madrid and things like that. But we're still unbeaten in the league. Seville, a very decent side um, and a decent result there, I've got to say. We were slightly on the back foot there, which is a little bit annoying, but we have been in a few of these games that we've won as well. Uh, the Real Madrid game, we were miles, like they dominated us, but we still managed to, to, to batter them scoreline wise. So I'm going to go assertively. Not happy with the performance out there, boys, because it's not been the same calibre. We haven't won it, basically, and that's the first game we've not won for a little while in the league. But we've still got the unbeaten record, and I've also just realised I forgot to tell you about another transfer. We sold Wallen to lie. Um, I don't know how I didn't even see that. You, probably, you guys probably all saw this already uh, in the in, in, in the transfer screen, but I forgot to tell you about it. We sold to lie for £2 million to Vigo. So there he goes. He's off to Vigo in the league below us. Didn't really get much game time here. Probably wasn't ever going to get much game time here in the future. So it's good we've made £2 million off him. I'm blaming that on that I've just woken up, really. Um, 20 minutes before I start recording this, I woke up, which is why, why I've got the hat on, because my hair's all over the place. Interestingly, Barcelona lose there as well. So, I mean, technically they go further behind us now in the table, which is good news for us. It also means it's pretty good stuff for when we play them. Hopefully they'll be out of form, out of sorts, and we can we can beat them again. And Real Madrid could only draw to Abar. Like the result, we, we've drawn here, but these results are also in our favour. Uh, I have to get Madrid still haven't played yet, so they could probably go six points ahead of us. Um, but I just don't understand where we've come from this season. I don't know if it's going to be another situation like the, our first season in the Liga, we did very well. Second season, we did very well as, as well, but we didn't get as many points, as many wins. Uh, maybe this season it will be like we'll do really well. And the next season will drop down again a, a little bit. I don't know, but it's... I'm, I'm not complaining, but I just don't understand how our squad of players who shouldn't be second in La Liga are second in La Liga. I think one of the reasons is that as a manager, I just don't overthink things. I know a lot of my friends that play games or play football manager, they'll lose one game and then they change half the, half the lineup and things like that. And they go a bit, a bit, a bit mental with it all. Whereas I, if we lose a game, I just sort of keep the same team anyway. I sort of, at this point, I've picked my starting 11 and it doesn't really change apart from a little injury or someone's a bit tired. And I think, uh, just don't overthink it. I think that's probably why we, they all just stay together, gel as a team. They know how to play with each other very well. We've got loads of green connections all over the pitch as well, so that probably helps. But I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know why we're doing so well, but I'm not complaining. If anything, I'm actually a little bit annoyed that we're second in the table because I wanted to have a good Europa League run rather than a Champions League run. I wanted to do really well in the Europa League. I thought we'd have a chance of winning that. Champions League, um, I think... Well, judging by this season, I think we'd have enough about ourselves to get out of the, the group stages. But then I, I'm, I, I can always guarantee that we'd lose in the first knockout round to like, I don't know, Dinamo Zagreb or something like that. I don't know. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. You have got... <laughs> okay, now Solonke has picked up a calf strain. is going to be out for four to five. Four to five. I mean, that leaves me with a little bit of a nightmare. Um... Roll Heiser can kind of play up front, actually. So maybe Roll Heiser will get the call up for this game against Barcelona. You have to go five at the back, which means you have two strikers. So it may have to be Roll Heiser, I think. It's absolutely typical as well that our two 
good strikers are out for at least a month each. Um, I mean, I say at least a month each. Solanke's out for a month. Osmanovic is out for the rest of the season, of course. Ah, right, David Cameron. Uh, he did his usual tantrum in the transfer window wanting to move clubs, and he put in a formal transfer request, um, which then no one bid for him. So he's now asked that to be removed. He wants to stay at the club, which is fine by me. He's a bit of a pain in the arse, isn't he, David Cameron? Three transfer windows in a row now he's wanted to leave the club. One of them, he got a new contract. He wanted a new contract this time as well, and we tried to offer it, but literally like the same terms, but he just wasn't having it, so we didn't end up giving him a new one. Uh, but now he seems to have piped down a little bit. Now he knows that he's back up and needs to get back into a team. Right, Barcelona game is here, so let's switch to five at the back. And um, What we do is we take Ruiz out, we bring in... Uh, Diaz, Kukred will stay there but I will bring on David Cameron at right wing back because he's better suited to that position. Uh, Borges and Medeca are fine and then Adzic needs to become our attacking playmaker or Cellini can play up front what about Rollheiser? What is, can he, is he there a little bit better there? Rollheiser slightly better suited to that position. Let's just see what it says on the report it does say that he's a better striker than Orsolini so we'll leave him up there and then we have to bring on Raul Thomas for Solanke up front. And I have to bring someone else on the bench who's... No one's really attacking apart from Leonardo Meza. So we'll put him on the bench. I think given our striker situation, I'm happy uh, with anything but a loss today. So, I mean, a draw will be fine by me. A draw will be fine. As long as we don't lose, I'll be happy with today's result. Barcelona coming forward, although we make a nice interception then. Adzic heads it down to Borja Fernandez. Cucurella now with time and space on the ball to get it to Raul de Thomas, who uh, plays a good ball up to Rolheis, who's in behind the defence and scores the opening goal of the game. Benjamin Rolheiser makes it 1-0 Oviedo away to Barcelona. Good stuff, boys. Highlight straight from kickoff though, which is always a little bit of a worry as uh, Zivkovic comes forward through the, with the ball. Just literally cuts through a defence, but his shot was actually pretty poor. What's also good for us today is that Atletico Madrid take on Real Madrid. Um, and I don't know, personally, maybe it would be better for them just to draw because then it gets us closer to Atletico Madrid, keeps uh, Real Madrid away from us as far as possible. But if Atletico beat Madrid, it does mean we'll go nine points clear as things stand right now. And... I think that would seal a top three place for us, maybe. I am saying that all this, like, we're not going to capitulate after this episode. Like, we could just lose every single game after this. You know, you never really know with, with Oviedo and our form. Sometimes, it has happened before. We've been on a great winning streak, and then we just lost a few games in a row. We don't really know why. But um, it could happen again, so we have to be wary of that. Barcelona, though, are pushing hard, although we've just made a defensive tackle there. And Rauler Thomas can get another ball through to Rollheiser. But Decker is free, and he should have buried that. How is he? He should have just taken his time and placed that past uh, Ander to Stegen because that was a perfect opportunity to score. All I've got to say, that was, I mean, scoreline, good first half. Stat wise, not so great, but that was to be expected anyway. It was a very similar thing with uh, Barcelona earlier on in the season and with Real Madrid as well. Throw in though for Barcelona, 70 minutes into the game. Hazard now on the ball, puts it into Zivkovic, and it's. Bouncing around the area, eventually gets, I think, deflected out. But Wallace puts in the ball in verbal with the clearance. Wallace, once again, into Rakitic, into someone else. And it's, oh, I thought we'd given away a penalty there, but we've cleared it. And now the counter-attack's on as Rowder Thomas is in behind the defence. Rowder Thomas to make it two. Couldn't quite do it. A decent save from Testegen. But at least we're keeping on the pressure and worrying the Barcelona defence like that. Although, to be fair, PK must be at least 40 years old by now in-game. He must be at least 40. So there's no, there's no... I can understand why Rollheister and De Thomas are just outpacing him. Oh, s seriously, just... Why is this happening? Why is this happening to me? Orsolini is going to have to come on the pitch. Him and Rollheister will have to swap over, I think, maybe. Um, and wh Why is this happening? All my strikers are now injured. Lozano's on loan. We have Zeus in the youth team, but he's out on loan as well now. Um, other than that, I don't think we have any other strikers at the club who are, I would say, half decent enough to play in the first team. Hopefully, this, what is it? Potential uh, potential foot injury. Hopefully, it's not too bad. But I think we're able to see this game out now. And we've got another historic victory over one of the big two. Although Messi's free kick hits the wall, that's fine. Another victory against Barcelona, which makes we means we beat them twice this season. We beat Real Madrid twice this season as well. This season is special. This season is incredibly special. And Prally performance out there. No one gave us a chance, but we've done it. We're, honestly, this season, 
I don't think we can replicate this again. We've done so well. I just we've beaten our points total from the last two seasons as well now with 59 points. I've got to say this has actually been a fantastic episode. I know we drew against Seville and we've beaten Barcelona, um, which are good. Both top six teams, um, but yeah, Seville were sitting sixth, weren't they? Uh, but other than Real Madrid that we've played there, I think all these other teams that we've played have been in the bottom half of the table, apart from Bilbao and the Cup. Uh, but all the other teams have been bottom half, which is why we've done so well recently. We've had a very kind run of fixtures, literally from, from well, from Las Palmas down. It's been very, very kind, I've got to say. Apart from the Bilbao, they've been up there. Sebastian, Real San Sebastian may have been in the top 10 for a little bit. Uh, but other than that, they've all been bottom half teams, apart from the teams we played today. And, and Real Madrid, which probably helps a long way in our form and, and, and why we're doing so well, which is fantastic. Let's see how bad the injury is to Raul de Thomas. Three, three to four weeks. Okay. Well, we've, we've now got to play fixtures uh, for the next month with no recognised striker. Um, so that'll be interesting. That could affect us quite badly. Who have we got coming up in the next month or so? 13 games now without losing is fantastic stuff. Uh, Real uh, Betis 14th, Granada 16th. Valencia 9th, Zaragoza 18th, Eibar 10th, then Atletico Madrid who are top of the table. Hopefully we'll have, we should, yeah, we should by, by the Atletico Madrid game, we should have Solonke back and, and Raul Thomas back, which would be good. And I'll tell you what, actually, next episode, I think we will do Atletico Madrid and Las Palmas. Um, I think that'll be a decent episode. So there we go. Top of the table, Atletico Madrid, next episode. Well, I hope you agree with my statement at the start of the episode that this has been crazy, what's going on recently. There's lots of good news, lots of bad news, but... The overarching good news is that we are doing superbly well. As things stand right now, we do have a chance of getting the title. We've basically got guaranteed Europa League football at this stage. We're nearly 20 points ahead of Malaga in fifth. So we've basically got guaranteed Champions League football, not Europa League. And uh, there's a shot at the title as well, which is crazy. So we'll just have to see what happens. Thank you very much for watching today's episode. If you've enjoyed it, make sure you do drop a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. And I will see you next time for some more Real Deal action. Thank you.